Okay, so hello, welcome back to Crazy Craft. In this episode, it's just like the title, we're teaching you how to do Tinker's Construct in 1.16.5. So, first off, you want to get seared bricks. You get seared bricks by getting grout, which is a combination of sand, clay, and gravel. Find that, you make grout, smelt the grout, you seared bricks, and then you turn that into all the rest of the things. You also need one for puny smelting, and then you also need a seared brick in order to get the book Mighty Smelting, which is right, uh, somewhere. Anyway, um, essentially, what you're gonna do then is you need a seared melter. The seared melter is made by taking a ingot gauge, which is four glass and five seared bricks in a kind of a TNT pattern. And then you need a seared heater, which is just eight seared bricks in a circle. Then you're also going to need a seared faucet, which is just going to be these guys, which is three seared bricks. And then a seared casting basin, which is simply just going to be seven in a cauldron shape. Then you put a seared brick block into your casting basin, put four ingots of copper into here. It will be three ores, because you get 1.33 uh, times for ores. And then you put your faucet on, you click that, and it should output into, okay, maybe the wrong side. Um, should have worked. This is, it is copper, right? Uh, uh, it says it's copper. That's copper, right? How do I get a uh, smell? No, oh, this tutorial is so scuffed now. Four ingots of copper. Onto a seared heater. Oh, okay, yeah. It's not a block, it's a seared heater. Sorry about that. I, uh, brain... I mistook. Anyway. Seared heater. Go into there. Pour that on there. And then you'll get the smeltery controller after a bit. Then I would recommend mining all that up. And you're going to want a considerable amount of seared bricks. For me, I got about two and a quarter stacks because I want to make a fairly large smeltery. Then let's get our space. So it's going to need to be... I believe you can do a two by two interior, but I'm making it three by three. But you just basically make a perimeter just like so. I'm going to actually make this one a 4x4, four four, just so that it has more internal space, because the space that is inside of it is the thing that dictates how many ores you can actually have in it. So, the more space inside, the more space there actually is in the... Then we're going to put the smeltery controller right here, which is where you interface with it. The fuel gauges are going to go right here. And that's going to be what we put our lava into. There are better fuels for future things, such as soul lava and also blazing blood. But we're not going to get into those yet. Then you need drains. Drains are what lets you pour stuff out of your smeltery. And now we have our first layer completed, meaning that we can actually st put stuff into here. So say I wanted to put sand in here, it'll turn into glass and so on. So, then we also need to do this. And you can make this as tall as you want, although it is better if it's all in the same chunk as it are most multi-block things, but it will still work as long as everything's properly locked in. So you shouldn't have too much of an issue with it. I'm going to make this one a couple blocks taller just so that we have a lot of space because we are going to get quite a few different ores throughout this uh, <laughs> this crazy craft extravaganza. And perfect. Okay. The next, what we're going to want to do is we want to melt this guy away because we have no use for it after that. We're also going to do over here, we're going to put the casting basins. Casting basins are what you use to get blocks. And casting tables are what you use to get specific items. Make casts by taking 
ingots of gold and putting stuff on the tables in it uh, so for example if i want a gem cast and an ingot cast i'm gonna need two ingots of gold then i'm gonna need a gem and an ingot and then i'll wait for the gold to melt pull that seared stone out we don't currently need it or want it so i'll pour it out and then break it while it's still interfacing so that it would not actually exist and anyway then once you have your gold just pour that right under the gem it takes one ingot per cast and now you have a gem cast get per cast for an cast and it will use the item that you put in but now we have those casts which are perfect and we'll be able to do a bunch more stuff now but there's also all these different books that you get from making stuff and we can combine them into the Encyclopedia of Tinkering, which we're going to use in order to figure out what's the best tools. So, tier 4 materials. There are Queen Slime, Hepatazon, Manulin, Blazing Bone, Ancient Hide, Slimy Vines, Imperium, Supremium. And Supremium is by far the best handle modifier, as well as close to the best head modifier. But there are more things. So, if we go sword, blade, wait, where, where is it? Tinker's Construct, Manulin. Uh, it doesn't have all the blade blades and stuff yet. But, essentially, all these are Tinker's stuff. This is the Aldemodium Sword. It's got an attack damage of 196, and you make it with uh, stuff. I don't know how to make it. It has very slow speed um, when in your hand. But then there's Blazing Bone, Bloodborne Blow. There's just a bunch of different stuff, and you'll be able to make whatever you desire with whatever modifiers you desire, as long as you follow that. So that's kind of it. Um... I, I might make an actual more in-depth thing, but that's all I really am going to do for now. Because in Crazy Craft, I'm not going to need a whole ton of Pinker's stuff. Although I will make it for my own personal mod pack, which I am working on right now for 1.18.2. Or maybe I make one for 1.16.5. These are just a ton of mods that I love for this version. But that's going to be the end of this episode, and if you have any questions about what to do with Tinkers and how to figure out more stuff with Tinkers, then I'll make a tutorial for that, and I will see you guys next time. Anyway, peace, good day, and I hope to see you next time.